Today I'm going to review the Inkbird IHT-1P Instant Read Waterproof Thermometer. In the interest of full disclosure, Inkbird contacted me and sent me this Instant Read Thermometer to test. And outside of that, this video isn't sponsored. Now I've destroyed a bunch of instant read thermometers and I found a bunch that I don't like, so I was excited to be able to try this one out. I've had it for a few weeks and I want to show you what I learned. The Inkbird instant read thermometer has all the features that you'd expect and a few others that surprised me that I'll demo a little bit later in the video. It reads temperatures, it's accurate, it reads them quickly, which is really important when you've got your hand over a burning hot grill. One of my annoyances is when people say that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's only true at sea level, and if you live more than 500 feet above sea level, which most of us do, you're going to think that your thermometer is off and that it's not working right. So I remember a demo from science class that showed that water will boil at room temperature in a vacuum. And at my elevation, it boils at 203 degrees Fahrenheit, which coincidentally is the exact same temperature that I usually pull my brisket at, so it's got to be accurate in that zone. If you want to see what temperature water boils at at your elevation, I've linked to a chart down below that you can use to better calibrate your thermometer at home. I repeated this test when I first got it and after a fair amount of use. It is still just as accurate and the temperatures matched what my other thermometers read. One of the features of the Inkbird is that you can calibrate the temperature if it's not accurate. Now mine is accurate when it came straight out of the box and I didn't need to do this, but I found the instructions that were a little bit confusing, so I wanted to show you exactly how to do it because sometimes it's easier in video. Hold down the hold button while opening the thermometer until the display says CA. Release the hold button quickly and press it once to enter calibration mode. You can press it again to adjust the calibration or hold it down to make the changes faster. I'm going to set it right back to zero since it's already accurate. When done, set the Inkbird IHT-1P down for 10 seconds and it'll set the calibration. So here are a few other features that I'm really excited about on the Inkbird thermometer. The hold feature allows you to take the temperature of the meat and get your hand away from the fire. The backlight is super bright for nighttime grilling and it'll automatically turn off, but it'll turn back on if it detects a big temperature change, which is a really nice feature. The screen is huge, which makes it easy to read at any angle. It also turn off after 10 minutes to save battery, but you can turn it back on by pressing the hold button. The Inkbird is rechargeable. Now at first I wasn't a huge fan of that because the battery capacity is only about one fourth that of a AAA battery, but it does have a battery indicator so you can know where you stand. With all the heavy testing that I did, I only charged it the first time before I got started. And even if you found yourself without a charge, you could charge it pretty quick and get back to work. I put it through a few torture tests because I wanted to see how it hold up. And in each one of these tests, I've broken one of my other instant read thermometers, which is how I knew they'd work. I left the Inkbird right next to the gas grill while it was set to full blast for cleaning, and then I left it there for about 15 minutes. It maxed out at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but was no worse for the wear. The Inkbird IHT-1P is IPX5 rated. The X means that it hasn't been rated for dust, but the 5 means that it's rated for streams of water coming from any direction. I wanted to see just how waterproof it really was. I left it outside in the rain and to my surprise, it even hailed for a little bit. Now, I'm a little bit forgetful, so it's nice to know that it'll be okay. I let the faucet run over it for a while and made sure that I got every part of the thermometer wet. Then I dropped it into the sink full of water several times, just like you might do if you knocked it off the counter or if it slips from your hand. You can clean it with confidence. In fact, I used the magnets to keep it stuck on the bottom of the sink underwater for two full minutes without issue. Mrs. GTE is very particular about candy making, so I gave the Inkbird Instant Read Thermometer to her to test it while she made some caramel, where a few degrees is the difference between perfectly set caramel and a gooey mess. It was more accurate than the thermometer she had been using, and she adjusted accordingly and got great results. So the one con for me is the size. Mrs. GTE liked it, but I thought it was a little bit too big for my taste and it'd be nice if it fit your hand just a little bit better. Now, as far as the size and the color goes, you're not gonna lose it in your kitchen drawer. It's gonna be really easy to find. But you don't have to put it in your kitchen drawer if you don't want to. You could always use the magnets that are on the back and put it up on your kitchen fridge. So overall, I really like the Inkbird Instant Read Thermometer. There's a lot of competition out there in the same price range, but for $23 on Amazon, I don't think you'll be disappointed. And if I haven't broken it yet, 
It'll probably last you a long time.